Hey everyone and welcome back. So in this nugget right here, what I want to do is I want to talk to you about something known as LDAP. Now LDAP refers to the Lightweight Directory Access Protocol. So why on earth would we want to use LDAP? Well, realistically, what we're talking about is we're talking about a solution to store information about particular users of the network and the network resources. Now LDAP is going to allow us to have a hierarchical directory service. So LDAP is often compared with something like say a phone book. As you know you can look up a phone book, it has a whole bunch of records for people and their corresponding phone number, it may be a place of business with its corresponding phone number and in a similar way LDAP is going to provide that type of service. The difference being is that we're not going to hold phone numbers within this directory structure. Instead, we're going to hold computing records relating to the resources and to the users of the network that can ultimately be queried over the network. Basically, we can have a centralized LDAP server if we so wish that we can interact with and it can give us access to this LDAP database. Now, you may have heard of something called Active Directory. This is very, very popular within enterprise environments. It is a Windows-based solution. And as it transpires, Active Directory actually utilizes the LDAP protocol. Now, on Linux-based systems, it's going to be a little bit different. Typically, we're going to see the open LDAP protocol in action. If you recall from a previous skill, we discussed the concept of open source code. This is code that is freely available and can be used in a non-commercial manner. And really open LDAP is just the open source implementation of LDAP. So us as users of Linux can use this to store our user information and for authorization. So let's say we have a user over here on their laptop and perhaps they want to access some type of server on the network or some type of resource, whatever it may be, what the user can do is they can go and send a request to the LDAP server and the LDAP server, depending on the credentials being supplied, i.e. the user and their password, whatever it may be, the LDAP server can either deny access or if it so wishes, we can grant that access back to the user. But what are we trying to access? We're not just trying to access the actual LDAP server itself. It can be an entirely different resource on the network. Maybe say some type of server here or server to here. The point being is that we don't have to have a database on here as well as a database on here. And for all of these different servers, for all of the users who may want to connect into this server and this server and perhaps a third server here, instead we can have this centralized place whereby we request access and LDAP can determine if the user can get access to this server and this server, but maybe not this one. It really just makes things much, much easier. Now we can, if we so wish, actually cut up and distribute the LDAP database, meaning that we can have multiple LDAP servers on our system, as opposed to having our laptop user here and just having one LDAP server that would be responsible for all of the queries to access all of the resources. Instead, we can have one server here as well as another LDAP server here. And depending on the amount of requests coming into a server, we can more easily manage this traffic by having maybe this server handle the request as opposed to this one always handling it. This can be good in terms of geographical location. Maybe perhaps the user is logging in from the United Kingdom. Maybe you want to have an LDAP server to handle that particular region and another server to handle requests coming in the United States. Ultimately, it's making things much, much easier to manage. Because like I say, as opposed to having 500 servers on the network, all having their own individual database for authentication, and that user always having to authenticate with that particular server that they're trying to reach directly. Instead, we can just have these dedicated nodes out in the network that are going to handle that type of authentication process. Now, with respect to LDAP, we have the concept of objects and these objects are going to have what are known as attributes. And the structure of these objects and attributes are going to be defined by something known as the schema. So let me give you an example of what I mean. Let's maybe say we have a person object within our database and that person happens to have particular attributes such as a first name, a surname, as well as a department such as John McGovern, works in IT. What we have here is an object with particular attributes and the fact that we were allowed to have a person with a first name, surname and a department defined, that was effectively defined within the schema. 
Now, like I say, LDAP happens to be a hierarchical structure. So this allows us to, in the example of an enterprise network, split things up into a nice, easy, manageable structure. One that is logical and makes sense to us. So let's imagine we had a company called CBTN. We can essentially chunk this up into something known as organizational units. So within our CBTN company, within our database, we could have an organizational unit for all of the users on the system. And then perhaps another organizational unit for all of the services on the system. And perhaps Perhaps another one for, I don't know, let's just maybe say for different groups within the network. So within our users, we could have the user John, the user Trevor, and the user Simona. And then our services, we could have a service for our web-based application. We could have email services, whatever it may be. And we could also have different groups such as trainers and a group for students. And this can just continue on and on and on and on. Now, as you can imagine, having this type of hierarchical structure is really very popular within enterprise environments. Now, when we utilize things like LDAP, there are a lot more technical details that we're not talking about right here. We have things such as distinguished names and common names and directory containers, so on and so forth. But the reality is, for the Linux Plus examination, we don't have to get into the nitty gritty of all the deep details of LDAP. We just want to understand roughly the purpose of LDAP, what it is doing for us. It really is just allowing us to map out our entire enterprise or company or whatever it may be into this hierarchical tree-like database. And it's going to give us that centralized place whereby we can control access for users and resources, as opposed to having every single individual server on our network where we may have thousands of servers all having to have a copy of the database on their own local machine. Just remember that whilst LDAP can be one centralized server, the idea of centralization doesn't have to just mean one particular server. We can just have a centralized pool of servers that are just dedicated to handling this type of action. So that is us for our introduction into LDAP. I hope this has been informative for you and I'd like to thank you for viewing. Thanks for watching. If you're interested in a career in IT, or just looking to brush up your IT skills, then be sure to visit cbtnuggets.com for a free trial.